at the beginning, uh, Orlando Bland's son must search for the trident of Poseidon. The what? Yes, exactly. Must search for, search for the trident of Poseidon to end the curse which has kept his father off our screens for a whole decade. This which, is Python-esque already. To which the, uh, the trident of Poseidon... Have you got... What's that you got there in that box? the trident of Poseidon, isn't it? And his son, <laughs> he must search for, you know, he's got... Anyway, so he must search it it next to the in order, in order to bring his father back to our screens, to which the entire audience shouts, why, why? Then, meanwhile, nine years later, Javier Bardem sets up another thing, which is a big speech, which ends with Dead Men Tell No Tales, which then should lead into the title sequence, which is now Salazar's Revenge, because it's harder to have something which leads up to a title sequence which says Salazar's Revenge. So, even before we get to the titles, it's been a decade and two different openings. And then the title starts, and I think, okay, already I don't care. Already I don't know, and I don't care. So the story is that essentially we are going to do the usual thing that the Pirates movies do, that somebody has to go on a quest to find something, somebody else has to go on a quest to find something else, somebody else is trying to find the thing that the other people are trying to do, and in the middle of it all, Johnny Depp will do his, you know, his, his stuff. So now we have essentially... Uh, attempted to replace the old characters. Now we have Cascal Dario and Bretton Thwaites as the new Kira and Orlando, which is kind of weird because those were always the characters about which I cared least anyway. And uh, they are going to be the sort of the central interest in a drama which will bring together the old characters, including Johnny Depp. Here's a clip. I'm looking for a pirate, Jack Sparrow. I need to speak with you. Hand me your sword. I don't have a sword. What kind of soldier has no weapons? I'm currently wanted for treason. So not the very good kind, then. I'm looking for a pirate, Captain Jack Sparrow. Well, today is your lucky day. Because I just happen to be Captain Jack Sparrow. No, it can't be. I've spent years searching for this. The great Jack Sparrow is not some drunk in a cell. Do we even have a ship? A crew? Pants? A great pirate does not require such intricacies. Do you know how long I've been waiting for this moment? The risks I've taken to be here. Are you sure you're the Jack Sparrow? Scodelario, not Scolidario, because I'm already mixing up my words. And actually, Kai Scolidario is the best thing in the film by quite some distance. She is the thing which, you know, you've, you really feel, OK, fine, there's somebody trying to, you know, to make the thing exciting and interesting and, uh, you know, and, and to give it some kind of oomph. Meanwhile, everybody else is going the other way. So firstly, we have Johnny Depp. Now, you could hear from that clip that Johnny Depp's performance from the original uh, Pirates movies, which I know, which we just heard that kind of, has got more broad and more sort of as the film goes on. So when we first meet him this time, he is literally flailing his arms around, waving his finger. I know it's a bit much me complaining about that, you know, waving his fingers around, grunting, gurning, incomprehensible, doing once again, I mean, I had referred to that thing about the it being a pantomime performance. And everyone has said in the past that, you know, it's meant to be Keith Richard. And I'd said it sounds like a very bad impression of David Bowie. Well, this time he's so overdone the sort of drunken Jack Sparrow thing with the with swinging with his uh, accent weirdly goes to the other side of the world. World, and he starts to sound Australian. He starts to sound more like Olivia Newton-John or um, Jason. What's his face? I mean, so there, there are, they are literally You're just thinking of an Australian. There are lines in it that are delivered in the man. It, 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 somebody clearly attempting to do uh, an Australian accent. Beyond that, you get the usual stuff in which everybody comes on, holds forth with a bunch of exposition. And so there's a trident, there's a compass, there's a curse. There's, I mean, nobody mentions the fact that there's presumably a very large check and a bank balance that are being sorted out because actually the thing that's driving all this stuff is, uh, you know, is clearly, it's financially motivated as opposed to any sense of, you know, of it being an artistic venture. Not so much Basil exposition as Basil imposition. Everything constantly imposing, you know, there's another bit of the story and there's another bit of the story and there's another bit of the story and there's another bit of the story. You're going, just, just follow one thread of a story. Just do something that's interesting. So 
All that's set up, and then we have to get into the celebrity cameos. And as we've, you know, it's not a thing to give it away that there is a celebrity cameo by a top-level pop star, whom I have to say made David Beckham's cameo telling Charlie Humdrum in King Arthur to put ten fingers around the blunt end and give it a yank look positively well, we Shakespearean. Well, we say who it is. Yeah, well, I've already said it. I've already said who it is. Oh, OK, fine. Well, then it's Paul McCartney. Ringo Starr. It's Paul McCartney. And, uh, you know, it's one of those, OK, fine, here we've got a cameo by a famous pop star because we've got a cameo by a famous pop star. Then... There's yet another in the long line of Pirates of the Caribbean's uh, uh, comic uh, execution scenes. Uh, so at one point they end up somewhere called Hangman's Bay. There's a whole sort of routine uh, with a guillotine. This is something that they seem to spend a lot of time doing uh, in the Pirates films. There are zombie sharks. There is a moment when a zombie shark jumps over the boat, which just seems to be designed so that you can say, yes, this all jumped the shark many, many years ago. However, the thing that's perhaps most gruelling about the film is that Amidst all the he's of the trident and he's the pearl and he's the thing and he's the what's it thing, there is dialogue that appears to have been written by the team who brought us Carry On Columbus. And just to demonstrate this, I put together a little competition called okay. Is It Pirates of the Caribbean Salazar's Revenge or Is It Carry On Columbus? I will give you the line. Is this for, is this for me or this the for list? you? It's for me, okay. For you, okay? Okay, go Here on. we go, fine. A one legged man with 18 pound balls, no wonder, no wonder he walks funny. I'm going to say that's Pirates of the Caribbean. You would be right. Yes. He brings news of what the, Lisboni what the Lisbonians are getting up to. I don't care what they get up to, as long as they don't do it in the street and frighten the camels. Carry on, Columbus. Yes. Oh, you're very good at this. Okay. I'm a horologist. There's no shame in that, madam. <laughs> okay, I just can't gonna... believe you laughed at that joke. Okay, I'm going to say that's Carry On. No, that's Pirates of the okay, Caribbean. Yeah, very good. Okay. Uh I'm off to Italy next week. Michelangelo wants me to do, wants me to do up the ceiling. Well, mind you, hang on to something while you're up there. Carry on. Yeah, because it, obviously it's... Yeah. I'm not paying for that. Never say that to a woman. Uh, pirates. Shockingly. Shockingly, it is pirates. Um, I saw her ankles. You would have seen a whole lot more if you kept your cake hole shut. That's got to be carry on. No, that's Pirates uh, of the okay. Caribbean. <laughs> We are to be allies, considering where your left hand is. I'd say we're more than that. Pirates. Yes. Last one. We've just had a leak in the hold. Did you? Next time, do it over the side. That's quite funny. Pirates. No. Carry on, Columbus. Okay. What that demonstrates, I think, is that you could you can literally mix up the lines from these two films and it is impossible to tell which is which did we do you do we ever find the trumpet of poseidon <laughs> what is it the trident of poseidon the trident of poseidon <laughs> The trumpet of Poseidon would be. The trumpet of Poseidon was a Viz comic strip that was uh, that, that was you know put just into the, into retirement. The, tri the trident of Poseidon. Okay, so but it's, what is it? It's the, the Poseidon's trident. He's uh, got, it, then, do we find it? Simon, it's, I w that would be giving... Well, I would say that would be a plot spoiler, oh, okay. except for the fact that there is very little plot... It's not that there's very little plot to spoil. There is much too much plot to spoil. So, on the one hand, you have some, some spirited performances. Um, on the other hand, you have Johnny Depp. You have the visuals that we have seen before, the stories that we have heard before and been told before, leaping over themselves and jumping the shark in a way that seems so self-referential that one would imagine that it's self-parodic, except for the fact that it doesn't even seem to be that. You have people on screen laughing at jokes and cheering moments in the film, clearly because there's nothing coming from the audience. Somebody tells a joke, somebody on screen laughs. Somebody does something heroic, everybody cheers. Why? Because the audience aren't doing it for you. When it comes to the great big set piece finale, I quite literally struggled to stay awake. I had been... I just thought, I, ha I have wasted so much time with this. So I think that even the people who are Pirates fans will think that this is really, really stretching a point. I think that the the sense that this is this is not finished, this is not going anywhere, this is going to take money, this is going to carry on, this ship is going to, you know, go on into stranger tides even, is very, very palpable. And I thought, it's not the worst of them, it's not the best of them. It is, however, the most unremarkably boring of all of them. <laughs>